Thank all three of you. Uh, questions, Debbie? Questions? Here we have a hand. My name is Cameron Bennett, IBW Local 429. Uh, I applaud uh, what you've said so far about safety, and yet the non signatory contractors are beating us because they have to cheat at the rules uh, without much retaliation. Because uh, I've made reports myself and I've seen nothing happen because of it. But I've got another question for you. Uh, I've also seen industry leave Nashville and Middle Tennessee. Now, whether it's the clothing industry or, or uh, companies like Aladdin Industries that were very uh, strong companies. What is this, this government, what do you plan on doing to restrict imports into our state? Because one thing in particular, my kids who go to a national public school must wear a shirt with a collar and slacks. And I cannot find them in child sizes made in USA. So they're forced to wear imports to go to school. The export of job problem. Who wants to go first? Ladies first, right? Um, you know, that is definitely a problem. And I'm somebody who believes in Buy America. Um, and I believe that that's, what, that's how we need to support our workers here, not just in this state, but in this country. So what do we do about the imported um, problem? It, it is a problem. And I'll tell you, we tried to pass a resolution one time in the legislature, you probably remember that, that tried to say, buy American first. We really wanted to try to send a message. We couldn't pass a law that did that because uh, the lawyers at the legislature told us that that wouldn't, that wouldn't pass muster. But then we wanted to pass a resolution to say, well, if we can't pass a law, we at least want to encourage people in Tennessee to do what they can to buy American products, buy American-made goods, um, we were able to pass a resolution. Unfortunately, resolutions don't hold much water. You know, it's just on a piece of paper. But hopefully it sends that message. So what I would say that as governor, I think it's important that, that as governor, as the Tennessee General Assembly, as the governing bodies in Tennessee, that you send the message that you believe in American products. You believe in homegrown products. You know, we have certain resolutions and other things that say even Tennessee first. Look, look first towards making sure that products have things and products that are made from things grown right here in Tennessee. So we want to try to do that to support not just American workers, but our Tennessee workers. And so I think you've got to use the bully pulpit to send that message that you believe in that. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard at, in some points to say, you know, we're just going to ban everything else. Um, obviously, if your children couldn't wear the clothes um, that they were able to buy that weren't made in the USA, that I don't know what they wear to school since they had to wear uniforms. The but... blue jeans was legal before my child started kindergarten a few years ago. All now right. they're illegal in metro public schools. And, and that's something that obviously, I mean, I, I'm not sure that Metro was trying to discriminate. Uh, they were probably just trying to say we want something other than blue jeans to be worn. But I think you've got to send that message that it's important to focus on those products that are made here in Tennessee, that are made in the United States. Because what we don't want to do is reward people for importing products from overseas, just like we don't want to reward companies for exporting the jobs outside of the United States so that American workers can't have those jobs because they think the labor is cheaper somewhere else. So I'm a big proponent of buy Tennessee, buy American, use American-made products and try to do something to make sure that we, we follow along with that. And you know, that's something that maybe the Metro School Board needs to take up. Hello? It's, it's a murky area. You know, there are the businesses where the components change and you can't stay in business and keep doing the same thing. And the clothing industry is one of those. Uh, now, there might be a proposition. There might be a proposition for a smaller business. This might be a business idea for somebody to come in and create a business that's making clothes to sell to the school system. But we're going to lose jobs. That's always going to happen. And my point is that we always have to be training people for the new jobs. Because sometimes these do go away. We can't expect for, for our goods to be sold overseas 
and not buy somebody else's goods. And we can't expect to have somebody to move their business to Tennessee or to open jobs here if they can't, again, move. But we have to give them the best proposition to come to this state in the first place. And there's only one way to do that. You can't have it both ways. It just happens. It's just a fact. It's the nature of jobs, business, and economies, especially in our modern era where we have what we want in this state is to have an open architecture system so that people can move their business here, feel safe about their employees coming here, and believe that they can have a place where their employees can make a home. But if we want to have that, there's a certain downside that's associated with it also. If we put on restrictions so that people cannot move their businesses or move jobs, we don't get those jobs. Life? Yeah, I've lived through exactly what you're talking about. It's interesting. Um, and I hate to go back and allude to this, this past event, but when my father first started out, he had a shoe factory and he made sandals. And he had a, uh, it, it, it was like a one loop over your big toe. And what he said was the Japanese came in and started invading the market, and he could not compete from a labor standpoint with that. And so he struck upon the idea that he would go down and try to sell his sandals to the parochial schools who use uniforms down in the Caribbean. And if you ever get a chance to talk to him, get him to talk to you about being in Cuba during the revolution, trying to come over the mountains and going through Castro's troops, Batista's troops. He's got wild stories about being down there and going through all that. Uh, eventually, the Japanese moved on to the Caribbean market. My father got out of the shoe business and went on to do other things because he really could not compete in that regard. Let me tell you what we've got to do, in my opinion, and, and this is a true story that's happened in Jackson, Tennessee. From serving on the Jackson Energy Authority Board, I know uh, what happened here. We had a plant which was uh, Maytag, bought out by Whirlpool uh, about two years ago. They decided to consolidate production. They're going to move that to Iowa. We've been desperately trying to get somebody to come in there and take that plant. We finally located a company named Carlisle. They make small tires for ATVs and lawnmowers. And they're going to provide 470 jobs. We're losing 540, but we're replacing 470. I'm very proud of that. If you go and talk to the Carlisle people and ask them, why did they choose Jackson, Tennessee? They will tell you that they are closing production in mainland China and moving that back to the United States for several reasons. One, they expect gasoline costs are going to continue to escalate in the future. So transportation is going to be a factor for them. Two, just in time delivery. They, uh, they knew that if they had production going on in China, they were going to have to have a huge distribution point over here because you couldn't just ship it from China and expect it to go to your customers right away. So they were going to have to carry a lot of inventory and have a big distribution center. And this would avoid it. And three was the fact that Jackson, Tennessee had this broadband network program. And in mainland China, they did not have that kind of infrastructure. They felt like they were in a third world country over there. Yes, they had cell phones, but China is decades still behind us in being able to compete in that area. And they wanted that broadband access because they knew that that way they could communicate with not only their customers, but also their suppliers and their other plants and coordinate their production. In China, they couldn't do that. So they are, they are closing down production in China and relocating it to Jackson, Tennessee. I'm delighted to hear those kind of stories. And I think that's what we've got to do. We've got to have the infrastructure in place. I recently, I know I'm on a little bit long, but I recently was in Shelby County and there was a 